Charlie Parsons Fight Hub TV, joined here by my good friend, Mr. Callum Smith. Callum, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? Good. Good, brother. Good. Look, we're here. Um, let's talk a little bit about the last year. Maybe a bit of a frustrating time for you. Obviously, we caught up in New York. Um, obviously, when you fought in London the last time, I think we spoke a few weeks beforehand, and the idea was activity. It hasn't really worked out as much as you would have hoped. Um, how have you dealt with this last year? Yeah, just try not to waste the time out. You're out the ring, but you don't have to be out the gym. And I've been in the gym ticking over and just just trying to just still improve as a fighter. You, you don't need to just train when you're in camp. You can you can still be in the gym. And it's also giving me time with my family as well. I've got a new little boy born at the start of the year. obviously got a little girl. So it's been good. You get the best of both worlds. But no, I, I don't bloom up out of, weight, out of shape and stuff. I, I stayed in the gym, stayed pretty, pretty on it. And... No, as soon as we got the day for the fight, I could step it up and you no know, go to LA, spend some time with Buddy, bring him back over here, and I you know, feel I'm, I'm I'm improving all the time, so I'm in a good place. Obviously, back with Buddy again. Uh, last time for your first fight at light heavyweight with an absolutely savage knockout over Lenin Castillo. Uh, this time round, uh, fight a tricky southpaw, yeah. the French guy. I don't know too much. I doubt many of our audience will know too much. You would have had a little opportunity to look, study, watch some tapes. What can we expect come Saturday night of your opponent? Yeah, he's, he's a good southpaw, good good boxer and ability, good amateur pedigree, um, a big opportunity for himself as well, the winner gets you know, front of the queue for the world title, so I've got to expect the best version of him, I've got to just make sure the best version of me turns up, and I believe you know, that version of me beats anyone in the world, so it should be good, he'll provide me with you know, problems I need to overcome, but I believe I'm good enough to do it. Obviously, Artur Baturbiev, the champion at £175, a man that everyone seems, everyone believes is unbeatable. Um, obviously, you won't think that. Um, in line to fight him. Um, a fight between you, I mean, you wouldn't have taken the final eliminator if you didn't believe that you could beat someone like Artur. And I suppose a lot of people respect that because you could have taken other routes. But um, number one challenger, we, we see him again and again and again. I think 36 or 37, but looking stronger than ever. Um, how does the fight between yourself and Arta play out? Yeah, I think it'll be exciting, to be honest with you. I think he, you know, he can obviously punch and you know, I believe I can punch a bit myself. But you just got to be smart while you do it. You can't. I think Joe Smith just ran straight into the final line and you, you can't afford to do that with someone like Betty Bev. But look, he's a good fighter who I expect, I admire. He's got three belts. He's undefeated. But... No, he can't keep doing it forever. He's you no, know, he's been fighting at the top level for a long time, and at some point he will lose. I just hopefully it will be me who does it. Let's obviously talk, go more in depth into that fight. Um, I think next he'll be fighting Anthony Yard. It looks like in the UK, um, which I believe is a voluntary. So we don't know. Do you know when the mandatory will be called? Um, no, I'm open to say come through this weekend. WBC will call a mandatory, and then I don't know how the time and works, but it was. He'll be told when it's called, you'll have to fight me within so many days or whatever. So i just got to take care of this weekend, see how that goes, and then know we are to look forward for the next fight. But no, I'm good, I feel confident in myself, and no, I back myself. How does uh, Baturbiev against Anthony Yard play out? It's a good fight. Yard can obviously punch, he's got skills. Stylistically, I think Betty Bev's a little bit wrong for him, but no, I'm sure some Yard fancies the job. He's no. He, He's a good fighter himself, so we'll have to wait and see. But hopefully, I can sit and watch that fight. Now, when the winner has to fight me next, of course. And let's move on to uh, a colossal fight happening in September in Vegas. Canelo Golovkin, the third fight. Golovkin moves up to 168. Obviously, you fought Canelo. How do you believe that fight plays out? A lot of people now saying that Golovkin's over the hill. Obviously, fought Morata. People thought he looked a little bit aged. Um, do you expect that to be a routine victory for Canelo? Yeah, which is sad, really, because the first two fights were so. So evenly matched, and you're both really, really good fights to watch. And in my opinion, it's probably one all between them. And I think the disaster should have happened not long after it. And it's been left and left to wait. And I think in that time past, Golovkin's aged a lot more than Canelo has. And I think it'll be a bit of a one sided win for Canelo, which, like I said, is sad really because I'd like to have seen the disaster you know, a few more years ago. Just finally for me, because I know you've got lots of media observations to uh, fulfill. Paul's leaning over, getting ready to drag you along. Um, but look, Saturday night, the monumental rematch between Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua being branded as Rage on the Red Sea. Um, Anthony Joshua, a lot of people talking about bulking up this time round. Um, hopefully looking for a knockout. Eddie Hearn said between rounds one to six, and then uh, Joshua said, look, he's manifesting that himself. A lot of, lot of talk about workouts and stuff, but we can't 
think too much into that. But um, how do you expect the fight to play out? I imagine be back in the country, man, but a difficult challenge for Anthony come Saturday night. Yeah, definitely back in Joshua, but I think just tactically, obviously, last time out didn't work, whereas this time he's got to be a little bit more aggressive, but clever with it. He can't be, afford to be reckless. And I think Yusuf will expect that, so we'll see what game plan Yusuf's got to, to deal with that sort of Andy Joshua. But it's interesting, I think, at the highest level, tactics that play a big part. and who can get them off and who can you can just do what they're good at and stop the opponent doing what they're good at and I think no I'm looking forward to it and I think if you do see a more aggressive Joshua it could be a little bit more exciting than the last one. I will squeeze one more in. Bivol against Zerdo has been ordered by the WB, uh, WBA. Um, another cracking fight. I know Josh Eddie Helm wanted Josh Boatzi to get that fight. He now speaks about you potentially fighting Josh Boatzi if the Baturbiev fight isn't called. Um, look, a really good fight nonetheless. Zerdo with you know, I think 42 wins, never really been tested on the high scale, but we know how good he is against Dimitri Bivol. Um, it's probably not the fight Bivol wanted after fighting Canelo. No, no, it's a tough fight for both, I think. I think stylistically, tall, southpaw, six foot three, six foot four. He's, he's a good fighter, Ramirez, and I don't think it's a fight that Bivol would have been calling for, but it, it's happening, and I think, you know, it's pretty evenly matched, and so I look forward to seeing who wins it. All the best, brother. Look forward to touching shoulders throughout the week and then seeing you soon in Liverpool. Top man. Charlie Parsons, Fight Hub TV. Delighted to be joined here by my good friend, managed by my old boss and an absolute amazing woman behind me, Rachel Charles. Uh, we're joined here with Ziad Almayouf. I hope I got that right. Zizo, how could I ever forget? First things first, how are you, brother? Oh, good. How are you, Charlie? How are you feeling? It's good to see you again, you know, and everything is good. Perfect, bro. I'm all good. Obviously, lovely to see you. We caught up on Zoom. No better now than the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Jeddah. First things first, how's the week been for you so far? Good, you know, it's been a... It's fight week, you know. Now we drop the weight that's left and everything. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling strong. I'm happy I'm fighting at the weight I'm fighting for this fight. So I'm feeling mentally better and I could do my thing and do my talk. And when I interviewed you before, I knew that you were featuring on the card, but it wasn't something that we could speak about. We're now in a position where we are are able to speak about it. We're here, it's fight week. Um, how are you feeling? I mean, I saw the reception that you got on the workout yesterday. The people are really supporting you. You're being asked for photos. You're on all the Arab media outlets. How has it been? It must be surreal. Uh, it is surreal. You know, if I was writing my own story using my pen and paper and whatever I write is my story, it wouldn't have been as good as God is writing for me right now, you know, and it would have been as good as what I'm seeing right now. What I'm seeing now is crazy, you know. Uh, I just want to thank God and thank the people of Saudi Arabia and thank the Arab world for them having my back and making me feel like win, lose, draw, whatever it is, they have me, they're pushing me and no pressure at all because I know that I have family behind me. I don't have supporters or fans, they're family. Let's talk about Saturday night. What do you know of your opponent? How has preparation been? And um, what can we expect from you? How, can you explain your style to the viewers who probably wouldn't have seen you before? Well, I don't know much about my opponent really. And, I, and at this level of the boxing game, when it's your debut, your first few fights, the best thing to know about anything is to know more about yourself and to keep developing personally and developing about yourself, you know, being the best version of fighter that you could be. And then you could worry about the opponent later on, you know, you should worry about what you're doing. So what people could expect from me is me adapting to whatever I need to to get my opponent out there as soon as possible. Let's talk about your goals in the sport. I've heard you speak about it this week, but obviously you haven't spoken about it on this channel. Um, you are fighting to represent the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. You're representing Egypt, if I remember correctly, and obviously LA, your hometown where you currently live, United States of America. Um, what are your goals within the sport of boxing? You know, simply and beautifully put, I just want to be the first professional boxer to get a world championship for Saudi Arabia and the first locally trained Arab fighter to get a world championship for the Arab world, you know. I want to be undisputed, I want to unify divisions, I want to be undisputed and unify not just one division but as many divisions as I could. I'm a big guy, I could go very low in weight and I could keep going up and up and up. But you know what, now we're educated, we know my advice to myself right now and to anyone coming after me is build a profile, network and build your name up. So when it's the right time to get out of the sport, get out of it, you know what I mean? It's a brutal, brutal sport, but what a beautiful place it is to be. Zizo, just finally from me, sell yourself to the people watching. 
Uh, it's going to be the first time that most will have seen you in an interview, your persona. Um, what can we expect from you? And um, yeah, show yourself to the people watching. Describe myself? Yeah, to the people watching. Oh, to the people watching, you know, you're going to see the best of both worlds. You're going to see someone who's uh, who looks good and does good in boxing and you're gonna see me so much more outside of boxing too if it's in movies tv shows commercials whatever it is i want to be a universal symbol you know to, of hope and passion and if you have a dream and you're hoping to do it you look at zizo and say if he could do it i could too zizo thank you very much for your time all the best keep seeing you throughout the week and uh, all the best brother I'm proud of you